Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we understood the importance of registers in a microprocessing unit. In this session, we are going to learn about the registers of 8085 microprocessor, specifically the general purpose registers and the accumulator. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first, we will observe the overview of the 8085 registers. Thereafter, we will learn about the general purpose registers and the accumulator. So let's begin with the overview of 8085 registers. Now, when we are talking about the registers of 8085 microprocessor, basically, we are taking the 8085 microprocessing unit and we are discussing about the register section. Now, we already know the register section of 8085 microprocessor is subdivided into two different categories. At first, we have got the registers which are accessible to the programmers, which is further categorized into two different subdivisions. At first, the GPRS, that is the general purpose registers, which are individually of 8 bits, and these are named as B, C, D, E, H, and L. We have got six different GPRS in 8085. Now coming to the second classification of the registers which are accessible to the programmers, we have got SPRS, that is the special purpose registers. Now it too has two different variations. First, we have got the 8-bit special purpose registers. And in that we have the accumulator, index register, and status or flag register. Coming to the 16-bit variation, we have got two 16-bit special purpose registers starting with the program counter and the stack pointer. So these are all the registers which are accessible to the programmers. Now coming to the second category, we have got the registers which are inaccessible to the programmers. And here we have MAR or the memory address registers which are of 16 bits. Then we have the temporary registers and a few more registers which are actually inaccessible to the programmers. By the way, the general purpose registers, which are individually of 8 bits, we also know they can be used as register pairs to facilitate 16-bit storage. Now focus on the broader classifications, focus specifically on the names. Registers accessible to programmers and registers inaccessible to the programmers. So what do you think? Why we have classified this register section based on which are accessible to the programmers and which are not? Is there a reason behind it? Well, there is. In order to understand it in a better way, let me give you an analogy. Let's now observe a car from a driver's perspective. Now, from the driver's viewpoint, there are only a few parts in a car, like the steering wheel, the gear, the brake paddle, accelerator, clutch, etc. And the driver doesn't even have to know whether there is an engine. Well, that's a bit absurd. He definitely would know whether there is an engine or not. But what about the functionality of the engine? Does he really have to know that in order to drive the car? Well, not really. He can still drive the car with so much of ignorance. But in reality, the car will have probably a thousands of parts or even more. Similarly, a programmer is a person who just writes a program and executes it to solve a problem. He is not bothered to know about the pins of the microprocessor. Neither he needs to know the internal architectural details. To write a program, he needs to know only a little about the processor. For example, he needs to know the registers which are accessible to the programmers and the instructions the processor understands to write his program. Therefore, the programmer's view of a microprocessor is the simplest description of the processor without going into much details. And in this session, we are going to observe how the general purpose registers and the accumulator helps the programmers in different cases. So that was all about the overview of 8085 registers. Let's now learn about the general purpose registers and the accumulator. So remember, we are talking about the programmer's view of the microprocessor. 
Now in the programmer's view of the 8085 microprocessor, we have got the registers, which are the general purpose registers, B, C, D, E, H, and L. So these are the GPRs or general purpose registers. Now what about the accumulator? This is, in the programmer's view of 8085, is named as A. I hope it is now clear to you why the registers are named like this. It is A, B, C, D, E, H, and L. And do remember, all of these individually are of 8 bits. Now, in the previous sessions, we already have seen in the general purpose registers, we can store 8 bits of data. Additionally, we also have seen, if we use them as the register pair, we can store the 16-bit addresses. We will come back to the general purpose registers a bit later. Let's now talk about the register A or accumulator. Now, in the previous session, when we were evaluating this particular expression using the microprocessing unit 2, which had only a single register R, I hope you remember how did we start the evaluation process. If we only consider this particular portion A into B, observe, at first we had the operand A loaded into the register R. Now, during step 2, we perform the multiplication with the operand B. And at that time, R was already holding the operand A. Finally, the result was also loaded into the same register R. Similarly, in case of 8085, only the register A, that is accumulator, is capable enough to perform something like this. That is, if we are performing an arithmetic operation involving two operands, one operand has to be inside this register. And after the operation has been performed, the result of that arithmetic operation will be stored or accumulated in this particular register. And therefore, it got the name accumulator. Similarly, if we are performing a logical operation of two operands, in that case, one of the operands should be inside the accumulator register. And by the end of that operation, the result will also be accumulated in this register itself. Also, operations like complementations, decimal adjustment can be performed only on the accumulator. So remember, whenever we are supposed to perform any operation whatsoever, we will use the accumulator. On the other hand, the general purpose registers are mostly used as storage spaces. Moreover, the accumulator is more important because in case of 8085, there are many ways of addressing it. In simpler terms, we have got more than one way to put data inside the accumulator or take out the data from the accumulator. And this facility is only available for the accumulator register, not for the general purpose registers. Let me now show you that if we are willing to perform some operations on the data which are available on the general purpose registers, we will need accumulator to perform the operation. Say within the general purpose register B, we have the data 06 and in D we have got the data 02. Now our intention is to add these two data and store the result back to the register B. In this case, we can't do this without the help of the accumulator. The entire process is going to involve three different steps. Let me show you those one by one. So at first, we will have to move the content of the register B to register A or the accumulator. So now in the accumulator, we will have the data 06. So notice, we have already got one operand in the accumulator register. So during step 2, we will add A and D. That is, the content of the accumulator register, which is 06 for now will be added with the content of the general purpose register D, which is 02. And once this is done, the result, that is 08, will be stored inside the accumulator register. Now, what was our intention? We wanted the result back in the general purpose register B. So, for that, we will have to perform the step number 3, that is, 
move the result from register A or the accumulator to the register B. So let's do that. Now finally we have got the result of the addition inside the register B. Now observe, we had to perform all these operations because our intention was to get the data from the general purpose registers B and D and storing the result back to the general purpose register B. And all these movements took place because we wanted to add the data, which is only possible if one of the operand is inside the register A or accumulator. So this is how individually the general purpose registers and the accumulator can deal with 8 bits of data. Now we already know, the general purpose registers can also be used as a 16-bit storage space when they are being used as register pairs. Now as a register pair of 16 bits, all the general purpose registers can provide either the storage for 16 bits of data or 16 bit address. Let me now show you how that will be facilitated with respect to 16 bit address at first. Say within the register pair BC, we have got the data 003C. Now consider this instruction LDAXB. This actually means load the accumulator with the register pair B and we know we are talking about the register pair BC by stating B and providing X at the end of this mnemonic. Now what's the mnemonic? It's actually the instruction which is written in assembly language format so that the microprocessor can execute it. This particular mnemonic means load the accumulator with the register pair BC. Notice when we are talking about the BC register pair, we are not mentioning B and C, we are just mentioning B. And in order to guarantee that it's the register pair we are talking about, we have placed this X. Now once this instruction is executed, the content within the BC register pair will be treated as the memory location from which the data inside it is going to be loaded inside the accumulator register. So that's how the BC register pair provided the address of a memory location. And using this particular instruction, we loaded the accumulator register with the data inside that memory location. So that's all about this particular instruction. Let me now show you how the register pairs can deal with 16 bit data. Now while handling 16 bit data, the HL register pair works as the accumulator. That is, it has more ways of addressing itself rather than these two pairs. Now for this particular example, say we are going to use the BC pair along with the HL pair. Now suppose in HL register pair, we have got the value 1, 2, 3, 4. And within the BC register pair, Say we have got the value 5, 6 and 7, 8. Now consider this instruction DADB. Now the mnemonic of this particular instruction means double add. That is, we are going to perform addition of 16 bits of data. And as I mentioned earlier, when we are dealing with 16 bit data, HL pair is going to work as the accumulator. So clearly, the addition of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8 are about to happen. Now do remember, these are hexadecimal values. These are not decimal. So let's specify them in our usual way. We will keep the letter H by the end of each number. Let's now perform the addition. So 4 plus 8 in decimal is 12, which in case of hexadecimal is going to be C. What about 3 plus 7? In decimal it's 10 and we all know 10 of decimal in hexadecimal is A. What about 2 plus 6? It will be 8 and 1 plus 5 is going to give us the result 6. So this is the result of the 16-bit addition. Now I told you earlier, in case of this particular instruction, 
the AHL pair will be working as the accumulator. So by the end of the operation, the result will also be loaded inside the HL pair. Now I believe with the help of these two instructions, we have got the clarity of how as register pairs, all these general purpose registers can deal with 16-bit data or 16-bit address. Now, so far we have understood all the different aspects of the GPRS and the accumulator. But I must ask you this, are you not a little bit confused about the namings? That is, why after A, B, C, D, E, we have got the names H and L? Why not F and G? Because if we are going alphabetically, F and G would have made more sense, isn't it? So let me answer that for you. Among all the different register pairs, the HL register pair is the most important one. Although 8085 is an 8-bit processor, the designers have provided for 16-bit addition in the instruction set. In such 16-bit additions, one of the operand has to be inside the HL pair. Now the question is, why exactly the name H and L? Well, we already have the answer to that as well. If you remember when we were studying about the pin diagram of 8085, specifically the address bus, the pins A15 to A8 were being used to send out the higher order byte of the address, whereas the pins A7 to A0 were being used to send out the lower order byte. Now, if we store the 16-bit address within the HL pair, H is going to store the higher order byte, whereas the register L will store the lower order bytes. Therefore, the name HL makes more sense. Also, there are more than one ways to address the HL register pair than the rest of the register pairs. Let me provide you an insight of that as well. Say, in the computer's memory, in the location 003C, we have got the data 78. Now, this is an 8-bit data. And how's that? Because this is a two-digit hexadecimal number, which in binary is going to be an 8-bit data. Now, suppose our intention is to move this data from this location in one of the general purpose registers, say, the register C. Now, how we are going to do that? For this, within the HL pair, we are going to load this address 003C. Now, how it is going to be loaded in the HL pair? Well, it will be justified by their names. That is, H is going to store the higher order byte, that is 00, whereas L will store the lower order byte 3C. So, with the content of the HL pair 003C, the microprocessor will point to this particular address. Now we can move this data in our intended register. And for that, we need to execute this instruction MOVC, M. Now notice this instruction, it is an interesting one. Usually, after the mnemonic, we have the register's names. Now in the programmer's view of 8085, do you see the name M? It's not there, right? So what's this M? In reality, this is the memory location to which the HL pair is currently pointing. That is, we are talking about this memory location where this data is stored. Now focus on the instruction MOV, that is move, C, M. So the content inside this memory location will be moved to the register C if this instruction is executed. Therefore, once this instruction is executed, the data within the memory location 003C, as it is being pointed by the HL register pair, that is 78, will be moved to the general purpose register C. Observe, we refer to the HL register pair's content by a different name, that is M. So this is how the HL register pair can also be addressed in a different way. So I hope the relations of general purpose registers and the accumulator is now clear to you. 
Do remember, the general purpose registers individually are 8-bit storage spaces, whereas the accumulator is a special purpose register which helps us with the operations and we have to keep one of the operands in the accumulator whenever we are performing the operations involving two operands. Additionally, within the register pairs, the HL register pair happens to be the most important one because when it comes to 16-bit data, the HL pair works quite similarly just like the accumulator. So in this session, we cover the topics. At first, the overview of the 8085 registers. Thereafter, we learned about the relationships between the general purpose registers or GPRs and the accumulator. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about the index register of 8085. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.